All right, so Wombat, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of your involvement with Metropolis? Well, uh, I remember I was walking a boot, just trying to be cool, leaning up against street corners, smoking, calling girls tramps, you know how it goes. And uh, I was listening to the, uh, to the Vietnam Archie sketch, one of my favorite classic Metropolis sketches. And I kind of just started showing up. I kind of had this knack for, uh, my roommate was kind of a dick my first mission here, so I ended up like sleeping in cupboards and stuff at the radio station. And then, so once like Marcus found me and I was all malnourished, and so he pulled me a bucket, a bowl of food, and I just ended up staying around and coming every week, because initially I knew food was there. And then uh, I just started hanging out and finally answering the phones and getting on air. Did you find that the uh, Metropolis cast uh, respected your input, uh, your creative ideas for the show? These motherfuckers, every last one of these motherfuckers treats me like shit. Greetings. Welcome to the party. You have come on a most fortuitous night. This is no ordinary party. What will transpire here will result in the formation of the greatest heroes Earth will ever know. So pay close attention. I would hate you all to. Will you stop creeping out the town and give us a hand here? Regrettably, I have sworn. Yes, yeah, sworn never to interfere. We know. Jesus, who the fuck invites this guy? No, he just shows up. It's like he knows where the party <sighs> is. Oh, crap. We forgot the ice. Hey, Steve! Yes, sir! Steve Hi. Andrews reporting for duty, sir! Hey, we need to get uh, some ice, like a whole burg or something. Yes, sir. Serving my party, sir. Okay. Private freaking America. Uh All right, so here we have another cast member from the Keg Wars film that we're shooting the documentary for. No names, please. All right, we're just going to identify you as the unknown soldier. How's that sound? Uh, I think that might be a little bit too leading. All right, <laughs> uh, we'll edit that out. Don't worry about it. All right, so tell us a little bit about your experience on the set of this film. Well, I was approached by the managing director saying that this was going to be a very professional film that was going to cast me in a very professional light. And showing up to what I showed up to, uh, well, I was very surprised. There was a rampant drug use. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> this is no ordinary bomb! It was a very unprofessional set. It seems like everybody really just had no clue what they were doing. I, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. So I was afraid that things were going to devolve into some sort of violence. or Rumors that actually on the set, um, that scene went a little bit too far, and you actually pretty savagely beat him. Is there any truth to that allegation? I had your worst nightmare! No! Nick Road is a pussy. Nick Road... No, the allegations of me brutalizing Nick Road couldn't be further from the truth. That man is a pussy! Calm down, sir. Pussy! <laughs> his mother is a whore, and his, his father, his father's a whore, his man whore, and his brother, don't even get me started on his brother. He's actually a nice guy. But anyway, Nick Road is a pussy. He's a little, little cocksucker. And did I brutalize him? I don't think I did. It's not my fault if a man can't handle a little roughhousing. I mean, come on, I got worked up. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah. Can I? All right, we have here a uh, secret Metropolis uh, comic book insider who uh, asked not to be identified or even named on camera. Um, he says he knows a little bit about the uh, inner workings of the cabal of filmmakers involved in this project. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, uh, yes. Um, uh, when I asked for my name to be blacked out, it was because uh, none of them knew who I was anyway, so, uh, but... I just know that you, you hired that Todd Gray prima donna. Guy was asking for crap all the time, making me bring him like Perrier's and Power Bars. You know, just sucked. Was there anything that happened during the production that made you possibly fear for your life or the lives of your loved ones? Oh yeah, Todd Gray on steroid rage. It's unbelievable. Really? What about anybody else involved? Uh, we understand the chief can get a little bit, um, shall we say, wired up at times. Well, that just depends on what drug he takes. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd like to say, sir? Yeah, I think Todd Gray's a pussy. Ah! Really didn't want my name associated with that. 
Sure, sure, we understand that. Cast members in particular that you remember having uh, run-ins with? There was one particular character, I think his name was Jason, who seemed to be on a, a lot of hallucinogens, either that or he had just escaped from a mental institution. He seemed very mentally unstable and continued to sexually harass all of the people in the, uh, the uh, production, uh, as well as drink all of the beer, and he had some substance that he kept taking around with him everywhere that he was huffing all the time. I'm not quite sure what that was about, and I don't want to be associated with it. Yeah, we've heard a lot about substance abuse on this set. Uh, particularly, uh, the director seems like most of the time he was sort of uh, out of it. Did you experience that at all? Most definitely. There was uh, one scene where he had me uh, bring in a keg. And uh, I think he was completely disregard for my own personal safety since uh, it was at the very early in the party and it was still very full. All right, again. So it weighed about a hundred and something pounds. I'm actually uh, right now seeking legal action against him for his disrespectful and discourteous use of the uh, cast, as well as uh, a sexual harassment by one of my colleagues at the show that night. All right, so you actually fear that all of this will impact your career, is that true? Uh, that is my concern, most definitely. I would like it to be known that if I had known what was going to be going on, I would have never been associated with that. Well, you're taking a pretty big risk coming forward in the documentary. Um, why do you feel that that's worthwhile? Well, you said that this was all going to be bleeped out and you were going to keep my name and identity hidden, so uh, just in case there are any future ramifications or anything, some unsolicited video footage were to come about on the internet, I would uh, be able to uh, speak against it now. Uh, off the record, is there any such footage? No. All right, well, uh, we appreciate your participation. We think that this documentary is going to do a lot of good and maybe even save some lives. So uh, thank you for participating, CJ. Oh, 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 oh. No. Let's see, you didn't hear anything about Secret Infinite Ken? Well, may, I might have if, uh, if I'd been included in some of these proceedings, but uh, some people felt it necessary to, to keep me away from these productions. I'm, I'm kind of curious, and I have my own theories as to what, what may be behind these. So Nick, uh, we've come here today to discuss uh, the filming of Keg Wars for the Metropolis crew and uh, some of the problems that that production ran into. Um, do you have anything you want to say about your experience there in your words first? Yes, Keg Wars. That was fraught with disaster from the get-go. Um, and first off, you got this you know, crazy twiggy-looking guy with a drug addiction. Sometimes I like to relax a little bit, sure, and if relaxing means putting shady chemicals that I bought from guys in trench coats down the alley into my veins with any whatever makeshift needle I can find, then all right, man, I'm going to do that. <laughs> oh, <she's> <laughs> Are you, are, you, are you finished, Stark? Are you finished with this? Jason is a, uh, well, he's a sociopath, and uh, and he was also uh, he was also hopped up on goofballs, and that's just a that's just a combination that just doesn't mix. Yeah. Well, you have to understand that director, he's an idiot. Now gaze on as I journey into the unknown. Richards, spark it. Sorry. All right, start over. let's start over at Richard's farm. He just has absolutely no idea what's going on. He's... Hold on. As I plunge into the depths of very reality, Richard's... Ah. Cracked out of his mind 98% of the time. Oh, you're talking about... He keeps constantly talking about how his direction and how his vision is art, when it's very obviously not. Doom can feel the unending universe is unfolding before his very eyes. Oh wait, I lost the host. I forgot it. Well, actually, let's let's just you you talked about it a little bit. Let's let's play the blame game for a second. Who do you think caused this to fail? Honestly, me. I blame me. It's my fault that I expected a bunch of people who clearly aren't as interested in serious art as I am to actually get together and bring their A games to something that I really think contributes to the, the zeitgeist or the collective unconscious or whatever bullshit you want to call it. 
writing dick and fart jokes for 30 minutes is not art. Kevin Look, Smith man. already did it for 16 hours already. I'm not now, doing Kevin Smith. And now I'm you know tired doing? of your Kevin Smith you know, accusations. You know what doing now? Writing Jersey Girl, and that movie was crap. I'm not writing Jersey Girl. It's your go, man. Sorry. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't see your hatred towards uh, uh, Kevin Smith. His wife, huge areolas. Yeah, yeah, huge. I heard, man. Dinner plates. Yeah. I am stuck in a constant cyclical mood of shit talking till the day I die for it. How was your experience actually filming the Keg Wars movie? Uh, it was scatterbrained. It was everywhere. Uh, there's this, in fact, we have footage of uh, right before we're about to film uh, Todd, El Diablo Erotica scene where he's the Punisher. Where uh, I can't get people in the shot, I can't get people to sit down and actually do what they're supposed to be doing, uh, let alone actually start filming. I missed it. Wheelchair Um, and half the time, just for no apparent reason, the camera would get hijacked for something completely ridiculous. Like, uh, a history treatise on Sam Houston. When he was, um, around 18, he decided he wanted to start a school. He'd only spent probably about six months of his life in school, but he decided he could do it on his own. He taught himself to read, hung out with the Cherokee, so he started a school and was successful for a little while. They went and fought with Andrew Jackson down in the Battle of New Orleans. It was good. He, he beat the shit out of the British way after the war was already over, you know, and he got hurt while doing it and was laid up sick in bed and decided he wanted to be a lawyer. So, um, what so what do you think caused all the troubles there? Do you think it's uh, the cast members' fault? Well, the production's fault? You know, it seems to be that uh, comic book people in general are pretty much well set up for addiction in some sort. Um, I'm a healthy enough individual to admit mine, even if I'm not willing to do anything about it. Uh, JP's obviously got his. Uh, Master Cylinder's addicted to sports. Uh, if you had to pick between football and Metropolis, which would you choose? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just give me 50 on tech. Yes to win. Yes! Alright, cool. Spent a lot of money gambling on tech football games? Did you get that? No, no, the camera's not off. No, the light just, it's a battery thing. No, I mean, do what? I only see them once a week, other than that, they don't call me at all for, you know, anything. How does that make you feel? Uh, no, turn the camera off. Just turn it off. Uh, it's off the record, it's okay, we'll edit it out. Sons of bitches. You, you try and step in and do something good, and n no one gives a damn, you know? Uh... Hey, tell that bastard to get off Uno. It's clogging the at work. Deal with it. Fucker. So, Wombat, do you spend a lot of time playing with your cats? Man, Chewy is my only real friend in this house. <laughs> Love Chewy. Is, Chewy, don't be a bitch. Has Chewy contributed at all to uh, the Metropolis way of life? I feel, I feel Chewy adds morale. She brings a lot more morale to the Metropolis. She, she is a she is a Metropa cat. There is no escape for. There's no escape. What about? Don't make me destroy you. What about this other cat here? Oh, that's Anne. She's Anne. They fight. Do they do that a lot? Oh yes, it's really like how I can survive living without cable. Is watching the cats fight. She has realized she can set up defensible positions and box. Is, but while well, it defends her from Anne, it. Adds even more hilarious hilariousness for us because then you get the cat in the box, which provides infinite amounts of enjoyment. Yeah, but the, how, how does that contribute to Metropolis? Next question, boss. 
Wombat is a dream to work with. Really? Yes. Would you work with him again? He's got that supple ass. So we've heard some um, some complaints from some of the other uh, people involved in the production that um, your Star Wars fandom is maybe getting in the way of your comics fandom and that you're constantly trying to take comic book based things and turn them over to Star Wars. Do you have anything to say about that? I'm just saying everything's better with lasers. I fucking roll up with this laser machine that I bought for $60. They're like, oh, fuck that. We don't need lasers. <laughs> Fuck that. Lasers make everything better. It's laser time. And, uh, Wombat obviously addicted to Star Wars. So are you saying the whole thing was doomed from the start? Yeah. All right, now. I mean, so we're, we're a bunch of people who have an insane amount of stuff to do that never gets done. If Keg Wars would have gone off, would have been as mass success it is, crisscrossing worldwide across theaters, what is the message you wanted to convey? The thing I was trying to do with Keg Wars is I wanted to show people that really we're all the same. If you're a superhero, or if you're a techno-fascist that split all your friends apart, or if you're a uh, egomaniacal Latvian dictator who can't, who is suffering from such crippling emotional difficulties that he can't look people in the face anymore, it's all the same. See, that's why I said it at a college keg party because I figured it's something everybody could relate to. That was probably our greatest downfall, though, given all these look. These monkeys' liquor was like throwing. Don't act like what you do is art. Target Frank Castle. It's campus police department. Uncle Ben, show me some bad shit. You don't, you don't know. I'm crawling the walls here, man. Oh, what's? I gotta call here, officer. Hold on. What? I'm not your fucking beck and call, Uncle Ben. With great power must come great parties! Woo yeah! Oh, you little bastard. Todd's a great guy. Sweet guy. L little rough around the edges. But no, he didn't he didn't do anything at all. So I mean He certainly did not push me in that shot. He certainly did not break a bottle later and shove it into my ass. I was you know, with me screaming, no, we're not filming right now, Todd. He's like, I don't care. This is my camera. Wow. No, no, but that, I'm, that, that didn't happen. Okay. That, I'm, I'm saying nothing of that sort. I was just, I was setting up a hypothetical situation that may have occurred and, but didn't. So you'd like to put those rumors to rest then? Yes, yes, forever. Okay. And if Todd is watching this, I'd like to say, yeah. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. For God's sake, get some respect, boy! <laughs> oh, damn it! Kids Journal, day 5.30. Learn to instill fear. Little punk, you don't know fear! Until you chewed on the bones of your best friend in a bamboo hell! So can we drink? No! Put that drink down, you little fuck. <laughs> Alright guys, guys, come over there and I'm gonna shove this mag light straight up your ass! Alright guys, this is best. I think I think party's over, guys. We we get we gotta leave. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, gotta leave. Over. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll pick something up, yeah. Oh, I got you. Sorry, officer. Into a new no. 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 Don't fight me. No. No. You know I don't think this is a good idea. Charles, stop <laughs> fighting me. Let's go. Oh, no. Charles, I'm you up. Charles, I'm you. Bingo. Everybody, drop that. Drop it. Don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes God forgives you for these things. Do do a stint in them. Drag off college kids. Okay. Make a mockery of decent people's justice. Okay.
They're good, decent people in the world. People with jobs, families, tests. And the baby kittens. Then there are the scumbags. The vermin. Feeding on the blood of the innocent. I spilled that blood. For all the kittens in the world. I punish.